is the Captain's Jug of Thoughts podcast. Recorded at the Ontario House. The Stone Jug. This is the Captain's Jug of Thoughts podcast. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Captain's Jug of Thoughts. We are here in the Ontario House, the legendary historical stone jug in Youngstown, New York. Uh, and I'm with the captain, your host. Good evening, everybody. We have a nice little show here for you tonight. We got uh, Matt from the Woodcock Brothers uh, out of Wilson here. It's a local brewery, just uh, two towns over. And uh, he's here to tell you all about, all about their beer and uh, tell you to come buy it. Buy it here, buy it there, buy it everywhere. <laughs> Love it, love it. Yeah, we're doing, um, you got some samples tonight. Yeah, it's people, good to right? be here. Uh, I did have my 30th birthday party here, uh, which was exciting. Yeah, the jug. So yeah. you're no stranger to the jug. No. No. I used it's to nice live to here. Be. I used yeah. to live in Youngstown. Came here, oh, 97. It was our favorite hangout. Oh, I had yeah, my first of black and tan here. <laughs> nice, there you go. Yeah, right. I think there's a plaque on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of plaques on the wall here. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's cool. This is a familiar territory. And that's what we want to do with this show is uh, highlight the character of this bar. You know? right on. So, um, Woodcock, another place that's got character to it, right? Indeed. Indeed. So, like, give us a little backstory on the, on the brewery. Uh, well, I, uh, first of all, we opened in uh, 2012, so we're going on our... Uh, we'll be in our sixth year in September. Wow. Yeah. And it's uh, it's out in the uh, old cold storage, right, out in Wilson? That's correct. The cold storage used to be run by uh, Ontario Orchards. Yeah. Yeah, so which is a really cool theme. So it's like a, it's also a stone, old stone building, just like we have here. Uh, yeah, it's which, a which pretty is, rustic place. Yeah. yeah. It's got It's, got it's, it's beautiful. And yeah. It's, and they're doing a great job out there. Indeed. Uh, the... Uh, the stone that we uh, ripped out when we tore out the doors, the doorways and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, 22 inch thick walls. Oh yeah. Of stone, you know, like really hard stone, like yeah. granite. Yeah. And uh, I did some of that cutting. Yeah. And uh, then they reused the stone um, around the bar area and the. Perfect. Around the building, um, you know, like out in the parking lot where the. Um, parking lot lights are yeah. stuff like that so they reuse the stone and uh, the uh, bar is actually built out of the uh, old uh, floor joists oh wow yeah oh, that's uh, great the old oak or I assume they're oak but yeah. they're really heavy duty real two by you know oh yeah yeah heavy duty wood you know so that was uh, made into the bar tops that's great. There's, you hear a lot of that. And, and here, this stone right here was from, wasn't that repurposed? Or that was the well, that was the original outside of the building? Yes, this was the re- original outside of the building. And it, it had been covered for a, a very long time. I, I want to say that this part of the building, I think, was built sometime in, like, the, I don't know, 1920s or 30s. Wow. So uh, the small part here uh, that we've re-exposed uh, had been covered for, I don't know, 75 years or something. Damn. Something now like that, that you mentioned it, I don't remember seeing that while sitting in the barber chair that used to be in this room. <laughs> right. Yeah. We, it wasn't there. <laughs> that's right. No. <laughs> there was a bathroom there. Right? There was. There yeah. was a bathroom there, and that, that, would, that was the uh, number one priority was to get rid of that 150-year-old bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that type of rustic old stuff is great when it's, you know, a good bar top. Yeah. A nice stone facade. Right. You don't need the same toilet from the 20s. Not when it smells like 150-year-old shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you didn't happen to take any photos or log the uh, bathroom writings at all? Because I had a few good ones in there, I think. Uh, um, I think a, a lot of people did. Some of them were yeah. painted over though over the years and uh you know some of that stuff is still out out behind uh behind the building in the uh old shop there we've got a shop in the back that we well we turned it into a shop and it's actually still part of the building it's just part of the building that we don't really use so um there is a lot of stuff back there from 
from the old, you know, a lot of old stuff that that we made new, we we ended up putting back there, and it's. I'm sure going to be reused for something at some point. Is there still some we graffiti? We just haven't figured yeah. it out. Oh, there's still there's some graffiti back there. There's some no old doubt about phone it. numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For a good time, call this person in 1983. <laughs> yeah, it says Jenny 8675 Oh my exactly. god, that's her. That's her. <laughs> I think there is a few. Yeah, there's a few bands I've been in that may have their, their a logo drawn on the wall in there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. So, Woodcock. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so Matt brought us out some samples tonight. Yeah. Uh, he's got the new XPA, right? Indeed. We did the uh, new XPA um, with a couple folks around the bar here, and uh, nice response to that. Uh, it is our uh, fastest-selling limited edition beer. We come out with it about four times a year. Right. So uh, it, it goes quick, and I'll give you an example. I was at Wegmans the other day. And uh, it it was in the back. They had just gotten it, and each Wegman's only have, were allotted two cases. Oh wow! Which is twelve units. You know, uh, I sold eleven of those units in about a half an hour to an hour. Sure. Uh-huh. And so it just goes quickly. Yeah. Is I, didn't, I didn't have to sample it out. I just. I told them people the know, reputation yeah. precedes it, and if you like IPAs, this is one of the hottest hottest items around. So. Yeah. And is that a thing like to do kind of a limited run of different beers and different? I don't want to say strains, but that's not right. That's the other thing. Uh, but different beers, and that makes it more makes people want to get it more, especially people who are serious about that. People in beer clubs and stuff like that, they want to get the limited edition. Correct. So, the uh, and the thing with the XBA, it is different every time. Oh, okay. Um, so it's uh, this is our. It is version 15, but it is our 16th version because we went back um, and made a 6.2, um, meaning that we went back to the six recipe and made 6.2. So. This version 15 is actually our 16th, 16th yeah. if, you, if that makes sense, because it didn't sure. make sense to yeah. me <laughs> when I first started here in January, but now yeah. it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <clears throat> but they look forward to the different um, hops that are in it. Um, this particular one has cashmere in it, uh, which is a type of hops that I never heard of. Yeah, I and, just, uh, I know that. I think it's new to a lot of people. I thought it was like a sweater or a song. Yeah, <laughs> or a song, yeah. 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 Uh, um, it's an exciting little twist you guys put, though, on your uh, on your IPAs. You know, uh, <coughs> they constantly change, you know, it's the same thing, but it changes just subtly every single time. Correct. Which, uh, is, which is a really cool concept. I it think. creates, uh, you know, like you said, a buzz about it, and people, sure. you know, really want to try the next one. So. Yeah. Absolutely. And do people, like... Um, I'm sure. Like, it's kind of becoming like a wine. Like, you know, beer used to just be beer, but now I'm sure people get different bottles and collect them and save them for special mm-hmm. occasions. You know, like, here's the 6.2. Like, oh, you have the 6.2? Yeah. Nobody knew how to get that. How did yeah. you get that? <laughs> exactly. You know? that Six, it, 6.0 was actually, for whatever reason, the most popular. Yeah. Um, and people still talk about it. Yeah, I like how you say for whatever reason, because that's in a lot of things... You just got to try a bunch of stuff and something goes, you yeah. know, people talk about like, like with music. I mean, what I, you know, people be like, well, how do you write, how do you get that hit song? And every band that has a hit song goes, we never expected that to be the song. Right. Nirvana never thought, they were like, In Bloom is going to be the hit. And Smells Like Teen Spirit went huge. And they were like, what? Right. Like you just, you try different things and then whatever goes off, takes off, takes off. What, are there any patterns you found from, uh, you know, what people tend to like? Or are you always surprised when you have a new release? Um, I think they're surprised more right. than anything yeah. else uh, that we keep com- coming up with good stuff like that, you know, and it keeps, you know, people interested. So I think, you know, I think they're surprised about it, yeah. that it's always different and, you know, they're able to, you know, find something completely different than the last versions, you know. Yeah. It makes them interested for the next one. Yeah. Well, that's great. What? What? Uh, let's talk about a couple of the other beers that you brought out today. We did bring our um, best-selling beer overall, um, which is our Niagara Lager. 
Right. Uh, we, we carry the Niagara Lager here. Uh, we've got it in the 16-ounce cans. 16-ounce cans, which I didn't know, and I'm really happy about that. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, and, yeah, a couple of guys here have been drinking a lot of those, and including some samples. But uh, it, goes, uh, it goes well with, um, you know, it kind of blends in with your domestic, some of your domestic beers, but it's a little more flavorful, obviously, being a craft. Um, but it is a Pilsner malted lager, um, and so it, it is meant to be kind of a gateway from the domestic craft or the domestic beers into the craft world. Sure. So, uh, and I think it's done that uh, very well. It's it, it anybody that likes beer can certainly like uh, Niagara Lager craft. Absolutely. Beer. So. And you're saying this, this takes a little bit longer to brew than your normal Pilsner? Or, or That's right, yeah. Th- about 36 days for a lager. So it is a, a bit of an investment to do it. Sure. But, uh, and, it, you know, it takes some time um, as, a, as opposed to an ale, which takes about, you no know, 10 to 14 days. So, okay. you know, you're talking more than double the time to make a lager, and right. a, lot of, a lot of craft breweries don't do it. A lot of craft breweries don't do it. You're right about that. But yours is very good. I've had it on a number of occasions. And uh, like I said, we carry it here uh, for a good reason, you know. Yeah, no, it's 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 my go-to beer. Um, but uh, I'd like to say that's the only Woodcock beer I drink, but it's not. I've been getting into the IPAs as well. And the XBA actually brought me into the, well, it was the Devil's Hole black IPA that brought me in into the IPA world then the XBA just floored me yeah and when I tried that back in February and I just started to drink a few more you know a few more IPA yeah. style stuff um, and obviously I have to drink uh, Woodcock beer to know what I'm talking about yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, out, yeah, out, out, out in the public so I have to drink everything <laughs> you uh, test that's available. Product. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is a so IPA is Indian Pale Ale, right? What In, is X, India? India Pale Ale. What does XPA stand for? Experimental. Oh, nice. Pale ale. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So pale ale uh, fusion. <laughs> um, yeah. So it's a uh, experimental. Actually, I mean, we don't even really know what it's going to turn out like. To be honest with you, so that's what makes it experimental. So you've been surprised by batches before, like you, when they come out, you yeah, think okay, it's going to be this way. That's what you were getting at earlier. Yeah. But yeah. um, well, what I was getting at earlier was being surprised by what takes oh, off. Okay. By what people respond to, but yeah, have you been surprised by an XP an experimental PA? Um, I'm sure we have. I I, yeah. I can't speak for you know other folks at the at the brewery, but. I've been surprised that I liked it because I never thought I would ever be into an IPA yeah. Yeah. at all. <clears throat> so, but it's a nice, uh, the XBA is nice, you know, it becomes real juicy and, you know, juicy meaning the, the uh, you know, like an orange juice, like a, the, yeah. the, the, the texture, yeah. so to speak. Uh, citrusy. And oh. citrusy yeah. and, and all that, so... It's very interesting what happens with the XBA. It, it, I think adding all the hops to it like they do um, smooths it out in a way that yeah. you don't get with um, normal IPAs. Yeah, it's definitely different. I've had the last few versions, and uh, each one has been different. Each one has been surprisingly delicious. Uh, you know, considering that they're all kind of an experiment. <laughs> yeah. But uh, they, they, yeah. they are, um, that they're all very good. Each one that I've had so far. Um, and now we've got this new edition out. Uh, you know, if you want to get it, get out there quick. Cause, uh, oh, definitely. It, it, yeah, it, it's was, here and gone it was just released uh, this week. Um, like I said, Wegmans, uh, the one in, where was I? In Hamburg. It's gone. <laughs> it's <laughs> so, gone. So uh, you're going to have to go to another Wegmans. But the bottle shops also carry it, like Brewed and Bottled um, in Lewiston. and uh, Yeah, Brewed and Bottled right on Center Street in Lewiston, yeah, for those yeah. of you who don't know. Ham yeah. and Fatties is in uh, at, uh, Hamburg. They carry it. Um, 
Um, who else would have that? Um, Murphy, Browns, and Clarence are getting a couple cases of that, of the XPA. Uh, we also still have some at the brewery, so. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. What's the address of the brewery out there? It's, uh... What's that? Where's the brewery located? Oh, it is uh, uh, on Lake Street in Wilson. All right. Um, forgive me about the address. Um, Google uh, it's, it. Uh, Everybody just Google it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 638. Oh, I got there it. Go. 638, there go. 638 uh, Lake Street in Wilson. It is... Um, two miles south of the lake so if you driving down route 425 um north and you hit the lake you've gone two miles too far <laughs> uh so turn back but um uh that's the address all right yeah you guys yeah. you gotta get out there they, they're doing some interesting things with food with uh, they've got some really great pizzas out there like yeah. stuffed pepper pizza i tried out there uh, it was great uh they're just they're doing some really really uh, yeah the beef on weck pizza is my personal favorite i haven't had that one yet but i've heard really good things about it i'm gonna have to get back out there and try that yeah, one it's a good one but yeah and the space is beautiful too i've been out there it, it, and behind gorgeous. the bar there's the glass and then you can see the brewery you right. can see the process like we said before it's the right. willy wonka type of thing you see yeah. the uh, the big barrels and everything yeah. so it's really interesting to check out how the yeah, whole no, place it's operates cool. it's yeah. definitely cool you know, to it's a nice atmosphere to sit at the bar and check out the brewery and you can even see the guys working down there you know yeah, yeah. yeah. and you said you guys are packed pretty often indeed uh especially tuesday nights half price pizza night uh you know it's well, that'll draw anybody in it's, yeah. re- it's reputation <laughs> precedes uh precedes it so a lot of people that i see out in the community and talk to at my samplings and that they they already know about it. Oh, sure. yeah, it's that place with the half price pizza. Yeah, so it becomes part of the community. It becomes a routine night where everybody goes out. Oh, indeed. It's, That's good. it's just just packed. Just packed. That's great. Um, so, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so you want to talk about more about the beer that we had here? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we well, were talking about else? Niagara Lager, which is our best seller. Yep. And then um, I also sampled out the um, grapefruit IPA that we're making, yep. uh, that we've made, and it's going to be uh, released in cans and uh, some draft, um, but the uh, proceeds from that are going to go to uh, breast cancer, um, uh, one of the breast awareness. cancer yeah. awareness places. Great. Uh, so, yeah, so we're, it's going to be like kind of a fundraiser thing, and that's going to come out in October. Wow, that's yeah. awesome. That's uh, good. So, our, you know, it's going to be called Jubilation, okay. which is uh, uh, going to be a grapefruit IPA. It's delicious. Uh, I had a couple guys sample it and say they loved it. So and The grapefruit's starting to become a bigger thing with beer recently, I've noticed. You know, uh, the whole sour um, sour thing is becoming big, you know, getting a little bit bigger. Uh, and, gra- and grapefruit fruit with beer is just, you know, it's really starting to make its mark, I think. Um, and it's, uh, you guys got a lot of... A lot of flavor going there. A lot of, I mean, I mean, just the smell of it alone. Yeah, our standard IPA, which is our Woodcock IPA that we make all all year round, um, actually has you know some natural uh, from the hops in that some natural grapefruit flavor. But then we went ahead and added uh, more fresh, you know, kind of grapefruit. So you know, it, it already did have that kind of a little bit of touch of grapefruit but oh, right. added it and it's actually a little bit pink and uh the cans i understand are gonna be uh pink oh so wow. they're gonna be really easy to find well and, and it makes sense with the breast cancer thing and, yeah. and the grapefruit like you know they should be yeah. pink you know it's it's, it's yeah. the, that's the perfect uh, it's very fitting and very that'll, shooting. that'll stick out on a shelf too yeah right exactly. absolutely exactly cool uh, did we have any other beers that we did? We today? had our um, Woodcock Porter, oh, which yeah, uh, porter. is nice. It's uh, about a 5.9% porter, uh, chocolate, and uh, uh, you get the hint of chocolate right away. I know I do right away on uh, about the middle of my tongue. Uh, you, you can actually locate where the sensors are on your tongue that, right. that taste that chocolate. It's about the middle maybe a little bit further back but uh then you get a little bit of coffee with that as well uh, chocolate kinda, and coffee kinda, who doesn't like yeah, that yeah yeah so it's a nice porter and we're selling a lot of that now um 
even as you know it probably as much as we do in the winter yeah um and uh porter is generally you know the darker beer is generally thought to be more of a winter beer but oh absolutely our porter yeah. is just uh there's some places out in the in the community bars and restaurants that carry it exclusively yeah um and in a uh, year round so we're selling just about as much of it now as in the winter so right well that's good great. porter yeah it's actually my favorite beer i named my dog after it oh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> <That's> fantastic <laughs> <laughs> yeah my wife uh i mean just tell just give me a nod if i'm going on and on and on no no okay. no um my wife sent me a picture of this dog that was part of a rescue um, thing. It, it was the dog was found in the woods of West Virginia. Okay. And she saw it online and said, uh, sent me a picture and said, uh, I want this dog. <laughs> and the picture was, you know, really close up of his head, so you really couldn't tell, you know, the size of the dog or you know, but. He, his head looked big. It was really, <laughs> and uh, I said, "Okay, fine. We'll get the dog, and uh, but I get to name it." Yeah. So that night, I think I was at the brewery drinking Woodcock Porter, and I said, "I want to name it Porter." And I got home and I opened the door and I expected a fair-sized dog, but yet there was this little hound dog-looking <laughs> thing <laughs> with big Labrador ears. And uh, yeah, he's just the coolest thing. So Porter, yeah, I think, funny. is a good name for him. All right, that's yeah. awesome. Porter, but he's, he's a black lab, basically yeah. a black lab with hound mix. So oh, okay, the Porter. So, so he's a little fits. black lab. Yep, yeah. he's a little tiny guy, and uh, although he's getting a little heavy sometimes, so we call him Porker. Porker. Uh, <laughs> at times, uh, he's, he's pint sized. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to pour a beer real quick here. Yeah, but, go uh, for it. No, oh, that's okay. It's, um, it's probably time for us to hit our first break anyway. Yeah, we can take a break. So, so I think I'm, I'm going to have the porter. There you go. I have the porter in honor of the dog. <laughs> in honor of the dog. <laughs> don't have too many. You'll start looking like the dog. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, so, yeah, one more time. The Woodcock Brothers Brewery in Wilson on, what was it, Lake? Lake Street. Lake Street. Lake Street. 638. 638, 638 Lake, Street. Lake Street. Go there Tuesday, get a pizza, have some porter, have a toast for the dog. Yeah. Indeed. Perfect. All right. We'll be back. This is the Captain's Jug of Thoughts podcast. Recorded at the Ontario House. The Stone Jug. This is the Captain's Jug of Thoughts podcast. Mm-hmm. Okay, we are back. And uh, what, what's the latest happenings around the jug? Also, the latest thing happening around the jug was uh, we had a couple reunions this weekend. Uh, Friday night, we had a 30-year uh, and a 60-year. The 60-year uh, was pretty interesting. Uh, I mean... Uh, they had thir- 31 people turn out for a uh, 60-year reunion, 78 years old, wow. or 78 years young, should I say. Were they all complaining about what the hell happened to America? They actually weren't. Uh, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I, I didn't sit around and talk with them that much. I got them set up and got them rolling, and then uh, I started uh, doing work for the 30-year uh, reunion because uh, there was a lot to do because the 30 year was going to be 100 people. Yeah. And uh, that's a lot of people to tend to. So, yeah. It uh, seems like it's reunion season. It's like wedding season, but for reunions. Yep. I guess, yeah. Yeah. There was a 10 year also uh, in town locally here, and uh, a few of them showed up on Friday night as well, and uh, a few more on Saturday night. Yeah. I, uh, I, I missed my 10 year. I had no idea it even happened until about a month later when someone was like, where weren't you at the thing? Yeah. Because I'm not on Facebook, so I don't, uh, yeah, you know, some things slip by. I was at a, uh, I was at a wedding in Connecticut during my tenure, so I missed it too, so. Yeah, it's still a good party though. Yeah. I yeah. probably wasn't doing much. No, no, I had a great time. I, uh, I stayed in this really old house out in Connecticut and it was, it was beautiful. It was, uh, 
the biggest house I've ever seen. I was like, this was actually one person's house at one time. Wow. <laughs> or one family's house. Yeah. There had to be 50 rooms in this house. That's we we went to a wedding, our friend's wedding. One of the owners, uh, the one of uh, one a member of the family. Yeah. Uh, got married this summer, and it was at his girl's parents' family home, and it's like that. It's like a, it's it's like a little hotel. It really is. And there's like a house attached to the house for the for the workers of the house you know what i mean there's an intercom system and old school no way it's not haunted right creepy yeah yeah. Did they say to you, am I on the air? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, yeah. <laughs> is this the, you're, you're the air? Us. <laughs> this is not the air. This is the, like, the web or the line. I Wait, think what's it called? It's, it's not the air. It's on the line, yeah. It's on the line. It's more like blowing up a balloon full of the air <laughs> and then putting it out later. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, but anyway, so did that person that owned the home, did they say, you know, what's not to like when you said you liked the place? Um, no, I don't okay. know. I, don't I, know. I once went into a home, and it was a great home like you're describing, and yeah. And I said, well, this is a great place you have, and uh, they, the response was, what's not to like? Yeah, no, I didn't hear that one. <laughs> no, I, didn't hear that. I would have found something. Yeah. I'm like, well, you know, the crown molding's a little tacky if you wanted me to be on, if you wanted to challenge me. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. How old is the building that Woodcock is in? Is it an oh, old building? No. Now you're challenging me. Uh, <laughs> hundreds, hundreds. Hundreds, of years old. yeah. <laughs> hey, one of the first episodes we did was talking about the jug, and the jug, once again, you know, goes back quite a ways. And. There was a few creepy things that had happened, but nothing too specific. Have you guys ever had any stories of woodcock hauntings? Uh, jeez. Um, um, only after I've had a few woodcocks uh, <laughs> haunts me in my sleep, maybe. Uh, but no, I, no, not that I'm aware of. Oh, that's good. A non-haunted place. That's great. Yeah. Well, it, was, it was just a cold storage, so probably not too many people actually died there. Yeah, but like that's where the mob takes people to whack them out, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's nobody out there. I yeah, think that's some true. apples well, might have died, <laughs> that's about it. Uh, yeah, a bunch of apples. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a, lot of, uh, a lot of old fruit ghost stories. Is that a... Oh. Oh, we got a little Metallica going on in the background there. Is that what that is? Sure is. A little soundtrack. A little, uh, yeah. So I just uh, bought these guys uh, a Niagara Lager at, at the bar they've been drinking at. Uh, so I rewarded them. This guy, this other guy, is a Budweiser drinker. And I recognize him from 20 years ago. Yeah, he's been here for a while. He has been. And I recognize him and the Budweiser. And I'm trying to convert him. Yeah. Uh, to Niagara Lager. We'll see what happens. I mean, that seems... It's hard to convert the ghosts. Is it? Is it? I mean, yeah, you're a bartender. You know, like, is it hard to push some of these newer beers on older customers? Well, you know, the saying is you can't teach an old dog new tricks, and it seems to rain true with some of these guys. <laughs> yeah. They got their beer. They like it. <clears throat> Don't give me no grapefruit. Well, he's been drinking Budweiser for probably... If he's... Uh, 55 years. Well, maybe a little longer than that. 57, 58 years. Since the last reunion. So, yeah. Um, and I'm, amazingly enough, he still gets up every day and gets up on roof on a roof and uh, shingles. I think I'd have to drink a lot of Budweiser to do that as well. Yeah. Is he the guy that used the sprinkler? No, he is not. No. <laughs> no, he does not have the sprinkler system in place yet. There's the sprinklers? So who's the sprinkler? There's a, there's a roofing company that uses a sprinkler system now up on their roofs uh, to keep their workers cool. Once they put down, oh, the, okay. uh, once they put down the, the ice shield and everything. Yeah. Because that deflects all the rain and everything like that anyway. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they, they put a sprinkler system up there so to keep the workers cool so that they can make it through the day. Yeah, I, that's it's a, great. It's a that's nice little system. Humane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it is. Um, yeah, because you can't, I mean, you're just getting fried up there. It's, I, I've done that work before, and it is it's you terrible. Know, it's, it's horrible. It, it's not fun. And uh, it's not rewarding. <laughs> There's really nothing good about it. <laughs> One of the tricks I used to use in the heat is just to wear a wet T-shirt. Well, your T-shirt gets wet about two minutes after you're Yeah, no, I mean, you know, just keep wetting it down. And, sure. But, and it makes a huge difference. Yeah. You it freeze really them. You keep T-shirts you in a freezer. You can do that as well. Yeah. yeah. Hang them in like a walk-in cooler. Yeah. 
We actually do that with uh, some towels here. Yeah? Yeah, for the really hot nights. Uh, we'll dampen a towel. Can, I, the can I have one? <laughs> <laughs> I need two. I don't think we have any ready right now. We usually do it at the beginning of the night before we get rolling. And then, uh, yeah, you just wrap it around your neck. And, uh, you should charge for them. Well, only the bartenders use it. It's an up, upsell. Yeah. yeah, like the reverse of like the hot towel on a plane. Yeah, <laughs> right. The cold towel in the bar when it's too hot. <laughs> yeah. Who, who needs a cold towel? Three bucks. Yeah. Three cold bucks towel. for a cold towel. <laughs> cold towels and peanuts. I would buy one right now. I, I definitely would. I, would. I would even charge it. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea. See, that's a creative thing to implement at yep. a bar. Yeah. It's hot as shit. Let's go to that place with the cold towels. Yeah. I yes. want two cold towels. Don't ask where the second one's going. Two cold towels, two cold beers, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, we got there. You've got that big fan over there. It's probably got to get pretty, pretty steamy in the summertime. That's why you know, it's a good thing the bathroom moved. So it is it a good thing the bathroom moved because that was uh, one of our biggest downfalls back in the day. Was. I mean, even no with more. that fan going, you could not keep that smell heading in the right direction. Yeah, I got all the fans just moving it. Yeah, it just kind of swirled it around. Um, it's no good for anybody. No. Oddly but, enough, nobody cared. <laughs> hey, they still came out in droves. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it gets it, it gets pretty pretty sweaty in here, right? It sure does. Yeah. And I'm one it's of the biggest culprits. Summer. <laughs> I, uh, on uh, nights like uh, Friday night, man, you know, I'll go through like three t-shirts because it's just, uh, you know, behind the bar, especially because, you know, you, you get two or three deep. So, you know, you got 45 to 60 people all staring at you, breathing on you, talking yeah. to you, shouting your name. And I mean, if it's already 80 in here, you yeah. know, that bumps it up another 10 and you're constantly <laughs> moving. And, uh, you know, when you're running around uh, 90 degrees, as, as, as uh, we all know, you know, that creates some uh, dampness. Did you uh, count for the hot spit as well? The, the, does that raise the temperature? I'm sure that it does. I did not humidity. account for that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to think about it. No. Um, I will say that, you know, on the last one, we discussed a little bar etiquette. And then I was looking further into that, and there was a few articles I found that were, you know, 10 things not to do at a bar. Every single one of them we we hit. Right. You know, I think sure. spit should be further up on the list. <laughs> <laughs> but, spit probably should be right near the top there. But, um, you know, people start slurring their words and spit starts flying. You know, that's part of yeah. alcohol. It's part of it. What are you going to do? I know a guy who spits during regular conversations when he's not drinking. So wow. uh, it can be a challenge. I wonder if there's something you can do about that. You know, you get like a, I'm, I'm afraid to say anything to him. Uh, I think he's been doing it for probably 30, 40, 50 years. I don't know how right. old he is, but uh, I wonder if you can just get one of those things. You know, when you go to the dentist and they numb you up and then they put the yeah. little sucker in there. Yeah, maybe you can just give one of those to him. It's a little mini. Now you can walk around with it. Yeah. <laughs> No, we don't want to create more juice. <laughs> um, we no, want to suck it all out, put it into another thing. Yeah. I think we need some gauze or something. Gauze. Gauze? Yeah. yeah like stick in his mouth. Some like gauze Marlon Brando and the thing. Godfather. Yeah. Like put the yes. cotton balls in his cheeks. Right. right. Yeah. That's where I got that idea from. Yeah. Yeah. That's an idea. These are to help me stop spinning. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, okay. So we need gauze in the mouth. We need cold towels. Yep. We need like a like a spit guard, like at Subway, <laughs> right, across, right? Not even across any of the drinks or food or anything. Just across the bartender himself. Yeah, I've actually put those spit guards in before. Uh, when I was down in Florida, we were uh, working at a new pizza sh- pizza shop that was going in a uh, new. Um, uh, they were the the coal fire pizzas. Yeah. And, um, we were putting all the gl- all the glass all the all, all the glass in around the counter and all all around the stations because it was one of those places you could walk around the station and pick out each thing. It was like a make your own pizza yeah yeah type place. And um, I'm like uh, I'm like what are these Tom pieces for? He's like ah that's spit guard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like oh well that's delightful. Yeah. What a society <laughs> where that's necessary. <laughs> yeah. I'm like well I'm happy that no one else is going to be spitting on my fresh vegetables I'm about to put on my pizza. So I guess that's good. Yeah. 
Um, story time. That's usually where we go in the second half. Yeah, we usually Story do. time. Well, uh... Yeah, since we have no ghost stories, we gotta yeah. do well, something thankfully, different. Yeah. <laughs> thankfully, yeah. Thankfully, there's no horrible... Dem- yes, my daughter was uh, <laughs> possessed, and we had to have the whole thing with the crucifixion and the water. It was a mess. We had, um... So we had the, uh, 60-year uh, reunion here uh, over the weekend, and, uh... We were trying to figure out, well, not we, but someone that I know was trying to figure out how they knew the, the guy that was um, one of the guys from the reunion. And, uh, you know, guys, he's, he's 78 years old, and, and he, he had told me about a story about 10 years ago that uh, he was doing his 50-year reunion, and they were doing the speech at, uh, at our park, uh, which is where our local local uh, school does their graduation. Yeah. Everyone wow walks across. Do it. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, and they, they walk across the stage at our park, and uh, you know you <clears throat> with your cap and your gown and everything. Yeah. And, and, you know, you, this whole ceremony is there. Yeah. Sure. So this guy was because uh, it was his 50 year, and I guess he, I think he was the 50 year class valedictorian or whatever. So he was uh, he was brought in to give like a speech. And at the same time, Daryl Johnson was also brought in to give a speech. Daryl Johnson, for those of you who don't know, is a local legend. He uh, won three Super Bowls with the Dallas Cowboys, fullback, probably the best fullback in the history of the NFL. Uh, he's right, he's right yeah. from our town Luport, right here. He went to, he went to Luport, school, yeah. yeah. And uh, well, great Making guy. us all look bad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, tone you know, it down, man. Daryl Johnson way, what the hell? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't get a street. <laughs> I've done some stuff too. Yeah. You know? Unfortunately, I think he graduated just before I got into high school. Do you know the year? Mm. Um, but fortunately, I did not have to tackle him. Well, that's probably a blessing. <laughs> I wouldn't want to tackle him. Uh, I don't know the year. I want to say like it was around 84, 85. That's about mm-hmm. right. Yeah. So, that's about right. Yeah. Cause I think he had moved on before I played against Luport. Yeah, well, he won his first Super Bowl in, what, 92. So uh, you figure he had to have graduated. He went to Syracuse. He had to have graduated from Syracuse a minimum of two or three years before that because he was definitely in the league before that happened. So if he graduated from Syracuse, then uh, I figure he went there from, like, 86 to 90 maybe. So, yeah, probably class A. Class 84, 85 I would, I would, is my guess, you know. That would that would be right before I started playing, so that's about right. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying yeah. that. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Got a good timeline going now. Yeah, exactly. So uh, so this guy um, uh, was elected to be, be the speaker but, uh, along with Daryl. And uh, he actually had told me the story about how he, uh, how he was the speaker at... Uh, at the graduation 10 years ago, which happened to be Matt, one of the owners here's uh, graduating class. And apparently, um, this guy spoke for about 45 minutes. They always do. About stuff that people that were 50 years younger than him had no idea what it <laughs> meant. Yeah. <laughs> and, and including, because um, I knew a bunch of other people that were there, people that were 20 and 30 years younger than him that just did not know where he was going You're with the whole us. thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so for 45 minutes, they had to uh, endure this. And um, then, uh, you know, when he got off the stage, Daryl went up there for, uh, you know, 15, 20 minutes, a normal, I would say, length yeah. speech uh, to a graduating class and got, like, this crazy standing <laughs> ovation. <laughs> he's like, he totally stole the show from me, but, you know, he's a class act, so I don't mind giving him the uh, props on that. <laughs> yeah, like, well, they got a standing ovation, cause, like, at the end of his speech, because they were like, thank God, we're done. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> so happy. <laughs> it's finally over. I've had to give, you know, I've done a few, like, weddings for friends and stuff like that. Sure. And, you know, they'll be like, I don't, what do you want to do, like, 10, 15 minutes? I'm like... <laughs> Think about that. You know how long that's going to be? Yeah. Five to seven and out. And that's going to feel like an eternity. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've actually, um, I've, I've been at weddings before where the best man, you know, like, you know, I mean, keep it short and sweet, guys. You know, so definitely, yeah. I'm not saying like only a minute or two, but, you know, five to ten minutes. I've been at weddings before where the best man has spoke for nearly an hour, and it's just like, what the hell are you even talking about anymore? Yeah. You know, none of us knew him when he was four. <laughs> right, and, yeah. And, you know, if you want to tell a funny story about when you were, like, eight years old, I get it, but, like, 
you know, it doesn't have to be when we were four, we did this. When we were five, we did this. When we were six, we did this. When we were yeah. seven, you know, it's like, come on. I like, love the. We, been all, to, we all want to eat. Yeah, we want to eat. <laughs> that that drink. is about the time to eat right there. Yeah. And, uh, we want to dance. At, at my wedding, my brother was the best man, and he made probably the shortest speech in history. <laughs> and, uh, but it was usurped by his friend and my friend, Fish. We just call him Fish. Nobody knows why. I know why, a guy named really. Fish, and nobody knows why. Yeah, nobody really knows. We've questioned him on it, but nothing ever happens. It I wonder if it's the same guy. might have something to do with fish witch sandwiches. I don't know. Huh. But it really... Anyway, he went on to do a prolonged speech like you're talking about, and uh, uh, he, he wasn't even the best man. Right, right. But that was... The, <laughs> He just grabbed the it microphone. The best, yeah, it was the best man speech by the non-best man. Right. But we took it. We accepted it. And, uh, you know, we do love him for it. Sure. Well, I've been honored or blessed to be the best man two, two different times in my life. And, um, uh, I mean, as you guys know, I mean, I, I can talk. Like, I, yeah. I, do, I do talk. But, like... I also am aware of other people. Yeah, this is not so, your time to... It's not my day. Yeah. You know? Everyone wants to hear a couple of little things that I know about my buddy here, and then out. You yeah. Know? And yeah. Let's move on to everyone else having a good time on their behalf. So, you know, I kept mine, you know, about three to five minutes. Both of them. And I was out. You nice. know, I told a funny little thing at the beginning, and then I said how much I loved him, and how we've been friends for 30 years, and blah, blah, blah. And then I was like, everybody cheers. Well, let's get drunk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, this that's is, the end of the show. <laughs> these are the formalities. Let's just get through this. Right. Exactly. Um, the one wedding I was talking about at the big nice house, uh, the best man had been friends with the groom since they were little kids. And yeah. he, when he was in like the fourth grade, he wrote a, like a, a writing assignment for his little class this was about great. his best friend Pete. Yeah, and my best he, friend Peter. <laughs> he still had it, so he read this little kid letter he wrote about his best friends. It was brilliant. It, it was, was brilliant. Great. It was, it so was sweet. really good. Yeah. Like that's that's one of the best I've ever heard. That's it was. such a great idea. My friend Peter has a fort at his house. We do yeah. not have a fort at my house. <laughs> I love going to Peter's. <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> yeah. I was at a wedding and. Uh, the guy, I think my father, the bride, whatever, somebody gave a speech, and it was an Italian wedding. So at the end, he said, may your first child be a masculine child. Uh-huh. And made the Godfather quote. Right. So for the ne- rest of the night, we are all doing Godfather quotes that were very inappropriate to <laughs> give it a speech. <laughs> Just grab the mic and go, the, the ink on your divorce isn't even dry, and you're getting married? <laughs> you have a man who fly you around like a whore? <laughs> you come to me for money? <laughs> you're not my father. People are like, okay, hey, okay, all right, everybody, the food's ready. Food's oh, ready, yeah. everybody eat. Just promptly get kicked that, out. That Nobody will keep your mouths shut, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Can act like a man. Like, stop. <laughs> as long as he doesn't get to number three. <laughs> so. I got a good wedding story. Uh, I met uh, someone and his wife at a wedding. I didn't know who they were. And uh, for many years... I didn't know who they were, but I remember a loud, loud laughing lady. Okay. <clears throat> when I uh, years later, when I moved to Wilson, um, a, a coworker of my wife said, "There's a couple down the street that you probably want to meet in Wilson," and uh, I, she said, "Okay," and uh, we ended up bumping into them and introducing ourselves and. Uh, it, turned out to be tim and deb woodcock oh wow it's amazing so we had actually met them years earlier at this wedding and uh they came back to our room along with everybody else including the uh the wedding couple Uh and partied in our room we brought back all the wine from the tables and um i think i managed to steal a bottle of whiskey and a couple of pitchers of beer um, oh, by the way, during you know those stupid breaks they have uh, at the bar, they close down the bar. For I sure do. It's yeah, the stupidest rule in history. Uh, yeah, I don't understand it. <clears throat> but um, during one of the said breaks, uh, I went up behind that bar and tried to turn on the tap system okay. so that we could steal beer. Sure. 
Although we really weren't stealing, it was free. Yeah. So I tried to turn it on, and uh, Tim Woodcock was actually there. Yeah. Uh, he wasn't helping me, so, but he was <laughs> overseeing things, and um, I couldn't figure out how to turn the system on. Um, so when the bartender did come back after dinner, there was a line of people, about 50 people long, and uh, he went to turn on the tap system, and it blew up in his face. Really? I must have did something seriously wrong. Wow. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> yeah, go up, bar's closed again. Bar's, clo- <laughs> bar's closed for another half an hour. I screwed myself. <laughs> and the moral of the story is... They shouldn't do that. They shouldn't close the bar down. They shouldn't. It doesn't Not make about any don't sense. steal beer. Don't close the bar the down. The moral exactly. of the story really is don't drink with Tim Woodcock. <laughs> <laughs> drink from Tim Woodcock. <laughs> now you can. You actually can drink from with Tim Woodcock. Yeah. It's, it's his beer. That's right. Yeah. Sure is. Um, all right, man. We want to thank you for coming out. Woodcock Brothers Brewery in Wilson. It's a great place. Great beer. You got to come out to the brewery because there's stuff at the brewery or beer at the brewery that we don't release out into the gotta public go domain. Right. Um, you have to get it from the brewery, and there's all kinds of selections that you can try. And you have to come down to the Ontario House, of course, and try our Redhead Amber Ale, which they yep, always yes. have on. Thank you. Always. The Redhead yeah. Amber Ale is on tap. 365 days a year, and uh, we generally also will have uh, the uh, the lager in the, the Niagara Lager in cans. Which I didn't know about. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, of I, course. I didn't know you carried that. We do. Uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, we put we put the uh, XBA on. Uh, you know, you did have the XBA on uh, in yeah. February, and yeah, we did. Uh, actually, you were one of my first sales. Yeah. Yep. Uh, so, so that's a memorable thing. Right. So we'll be. Uh, you know. We'll, we'll periodically we're going to have a bunch of their different beers you know when they come out with different things we like to always try them out and we like to put them on t- tap out here put them on in cans whatever whatever they offer us we like to try and do try and support all our uh, local businesses and um again that's uh what 638 lake street you said 638 lake 638 street. lake street uh, the Woodcock phone number Brothers. is three 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 four thousand. Well, there you go. That's an easy one to remember. <laughs> so everybody give them a call. Swing by. Make sure you uh, also obviously come down, sample uh, their products here, the, uh, yeah. the old good old stone jug. And uh, we'll see you guys soon. This is the Captain's Jug of Thoughts podcast. Recorded at the Ontario House. The Stone Jug. This is the Captain's Jug of Thoughts podcast.